Good morning, good morning, good morning. I really thought I was going to be ish today. But I made it. I made it. With seconds to spare here. So let me check my live feed. Make sure that the other Casey is on there. And she, Seconds to spare here. There we go. We'll turn her down. So that we don't have to listen to her and me at the same time. So happy spring, you all. As I look out my bright, sunny window, uh, it is sunny, but it is like 23 degrees outside in Ohio today. So, hey, I don't know. I, I You can't have everything, I guess. You can have sunshine, but you can't have warmth from the sunshine. So, <laughs> Lord have mercy. Somebody had on their uh, Facebook page this weekend, which I thought was hilarious. They had the brackets from the March Madness, and in each bracket, it said uh, 78 degrees, 28 degrees, uh, snow, sleet, wind, rain, sun, you know, and I thought it was hilarious because it was like the perfect, the perfect um, thing for Ohio and the weather. I don't think it's just uh, Ohio. I think it's everywhere. I mean, I, I don't really think it matters where you live anymore. We don't have the weather like we used to when I was growing up. Good morning, Miss Sherry Brown, my mother-in-law. Good morning. Um, we don't have good weather anywhere. Global warming, all that yuck, 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 yuck. Anyway, used to, you could count on, you know, spring, summer, winter, fall. I used to look forward to that. And now you just have uh, cold and warm. That's about it. Cold or warm. And a combination of the two. So I know yesterday on the way to church, I had to have my earmuffs, my gloves, my winter coat. And then by the time we got out of the church, it was warmed up and I didn't even uh, put all those things on. I didn't even zip up my coat. Oh, I hate that when people don't zip up their coats in the winter. You keep your core warm, you keep everything warm. Okay. But we're not here to talk about the weather. We're here to talk about stamping. And so today I am going to demonstrate the flying seagull card. Susan Campfield, that's C-A-M-P field, um, showed this card on her blog. And it's like taking over the internet at the moment. Um, it's all the rage. So I... Um, I'm not responsible for creating this fold. I'm only responsible for creating my version of this uh, card. That's all. So I'm going to do a flying seagull. So um, I will put you in the cradle. And I have a few announcements to make. So I'll get you up in the cradle and I'll make some announcements. Show you a few things. And then we will um, move on along and learn how to do a flying seagull card today. Okay? Sounds good. All right. Let's get you up. All right. Now, unfortunately, I have some new lighting that is, let me see here. I have some new lighting, which is not unfortunate, actually. It's a good thing, but it's in the way at the moment okay so let's see if I can get my light back over here and see if that's helpful all right all right let me see here you guys cannot see the bottom of my work area which means I think you have to come forward a little bit more. So let me bring you forward a little more. And let's adjust for that. Give me just a second to make sure. You know, last week, oh, I can't see my comments anymore. Let me fix that. All right, now I should, okay, there. Now I can see my comments. All right, last week y'all did not tell me that my power cord was in the way. And I was watching the replay, and all I could see was my stupid power cord. It was driving me crazy. So I'm like, why did my people not tell me that? 
I'm like, y'all, you gotta, you gotta tell me these things. So this week, I'm very aware that there is no power cord in there. So yay, no power cord. And I also remembered to print up my March host code. So this is my March host code. I should have blown it up so you can't read it. So you'll have to screenshot it. But if you place an order at caseywhite.stampinup.net, uh, go through my web page there, uh, my Stampin' Up! web page. That is the March host code there in the middle, and that is the code that you would use. Okay, so put that up out of the way. Okay, I have some announcements. Um, I am not great with e-commerce yet. I'm working on it, okay, guys? Just bear with me. Um, I have started to offer some tutorials, and... Uh, right now on my page, I have the tutorial for the uh, bunny box, the wobbler, with the wobbler, the bunny wobbler box. And let me find my tutorial here so I can show you. So this is just an example. This is the uh, tutorial that I have with, it tells you everything that you'll need to make the box. Um, except, you know, the, um, we made it Easter and we used the bunny from, um, um, the rain and shine suite. Uh, but you can use anything you want. Okay. But, uh, my instructions tells you what you need. It tells you how to score it. And then you also get, uh, two pages with this one that give you, um, how, what it's going to look like after you've scored it and then how to cut everything away and where to put your tear and tape. So you've got good diagrams with this tutorial and all of the information. So this is an example of the tutorials, okay? And right now, I um, there all the tutorials will be $3. And I um, take Venmo and PayPal. I can do a credit card, but you can't put your credit card number on my Facebook page. That would just be irresponsible. Um, and I'm, I'm working on that. I think I can invoice you. Oops, I forgot that. I think I can invoice you through my, um, what is it called? My Square account, uh, if you want to use a credit card. But I'm, I'm still working on that. And I just wanted to show you, these are the... You know, when I make a new project, I always, always, always make it out of um, copy paper first. And that way, if you screw it up, you screwed up copy paper, which you should have plenty of. So these are the patterns that I copied and put um, in your tutorial. But when I save it for myself, I clip my copies to it and I put it in my notebook down in a sleeve and that way I have my tutorial, I have my paper copies, and that way when I know I'm going to go make the project, then I have the paper copy. Um, a tutorial that I'm going to put up on the page today will be the instructions for the fancy cold fold card with the belly band. And we made this uh, a few weeks ago, and so you slide the belly band off there like that, and then you would open the card, ta-da! Apparently, I didn't stamp the inside of that one yet. Oops. But anyway, you get it. So I have the tutorial for this one. And I always suggest that if you're going to send this in the mail, I mean, it goes flat. So you can send it in the mail. It's not an issue. Uh, but if you are going to send it in the mail, a lot of people do not understand that a belly band is not supposed to just be ripped off the back. So, you know, I would put a little post-it note that says slide here with an arrow. That way, if you're sending this to somebody who's not familiar with hand stamp cards and how we make them, um, they know to slide the belly band off. People don't understand what a belly band is. But this is your instruction sheet for that. And once again, this is my paper copy that I have attached to the back with all the dimensions. Um, so when I make a version of something, uh, when I download a tutorial from someone's website or something, I always make myself a paper copy with all the dimensions on the paper copy, and that's how I store it in my folder again. 
So I will be putting that one up. The WV card that I made on last week's show, last week's live, that is uh, up on the web today. Um, that's that one in the bunny box. That one have been on there. And I'm going to add that one. Um, I might add the, the, the flying seagull card. Um, it just depends. I got to double check it, make sure that I have all the pictures and all the instructions in there uh, exactly for you all. Uh, I want to double check it. I'm going to change this light here. No, that's not going to work. Hang on, guys. I got some new light, but it's kind of, all right, hidden a little bit. Okay, which is crooked, my phone or, oh. okay, what's crooked? Something's crooked. Can't stand to look at crooked stuff. What did I do? Oh, I turned you guys crooked. I'm sorry. Let me get you back to straight. I can't see. My light is blocking my cradle. I think that's... Let me see here. Sorry, guys. All right. Seems like I am always, always, always adjusting everything. But that's just what happens. That's just what happens. Okay. So today we are going to make uh, a flying seagull card. And uh, it gets its name because of the way that it opens. Where is my... No, I was late. To... I was almost late today because of the very last minute. There it is. The very last minute, I decided to cut another flying seagull card. Okay. So the flying seagull card, as you can see, this is not good because you can't, you can see it standing up here. Let me just show it to you standing up. You see it's got these wings here like this on both sides. And then uh, you've got a piece that connects here. And when you turn it over... Can you see that kind of looks like wings, like flapping wings? So uh, that's where it gets its name, Flying Seagull Card, okay? And so when you open it then, it's got three panels that you can see, two of them that you can see very well, and then the one panel is hidden a little bit in the back. Now, Susan suggests that if you want to put a, per a personal note in there, that you could use this panel back here uh, on the right side, you know, because that's generally where we write in cards. And then that message would be hidden so that you, um, your um, recipient then could just set it up and display it like this, and then nobody would be able to see that hidden message unless they picked it up and looked at it. You know, in case you want to say something. But this is a flying seagull card. Okay. So uh, what you will need are two sheets of cardstock. And uh, you um, need one full sheet for the wings. And then you'll need um, about a half a sheet of cardstock. A little le Actually, it's about a quarter a sheet of cardstock. Because um, this is a square. Uh, for the centerpiece. Okay, so you need two sheets of cardstock. And let me get my cardstock out and put this away. All right, so let me get this out of the way. And you'll need some designer series paper as well. So what we did was we started from uh, one sheet of cardstock, one sheet of cardstock, okay? And what you're going to do is you're going to take that cardstock and you're going to put it in your machine. at four and a quarter and you're going to slice 
And so now you have two sheets of cardstock that are this size. They are four and a quarter by 11. And uh, what they need to be is four and a quarter by eight and a quarter. So what I do is, because I am lazy, okay, my arm, uh, the piece that keeps my armature closed broke off. And so I have a piece of tape on it. So I don't open the arm of my thing. So I have to do math, okay? So I know I want this 11 inch piece to be eight and a quarter inches. So uh, I get the math out and I say 11 minus eight and a quarter is two and three quarters. So I put this in here at two and three quarters. And I chop it off at two and three quarters. And now I have two pieces of cardstock that are four and a quarter by eight and a quarter. So that's what you start with. Those are your, those are going to be your seagull wings. Okay. Your gull wings. All right. One moment, please. It is spring. And guess what that means? Allergies. And guess what that means? It means my eyeballs are tearing up. So one moment, please. Let me just get this taken care of so I can see. I have to be able to see. All right, so you've got two sheets of cardstock that are four and a quarter by eight and a quarter. And now you're going to put them in here and we're going to score them. All right, so the first score is going to be at two and a quarter. Okay, so you want your scoring blade there and you're going to score it at two and a quarter. And then you're going to move it. And the second score is going to be at four. And now the third score is going to be six and a quarter. So normally you would move it through there to six and a quarter. Okay. Um, if you turn your page, if you flip it over and scored it two, that's going to be the same mark as six and a quarter. Okay. So that's what you're doing. Okay. Because your paper is eight and a quarter, so two inches in is that's why I flipped it. So four and a quarter, I'm sorry, two and a quarter, four, and six and a quarter. Those are going to be your scores. Okay. And now you're done scoring. So let me get my self together here. All right. So now we are just going to Mountain Valley fold these. And you know, it doesn't matter which way you're folding them right now. Just Mountain Valley. It doesn't matter because we're not attaching them to the card yet. So you're just getting your flip, your, um, you're just getting them working here. I want to burnish them, that's all. Okay. So now we need the piece that is four and a quarter by four and a quarter square. Okay. So you get your second sheet of cardstock, put it in your thing and cut, and you'll need a four and a quarter by four and a quarter square. So if you cut your cardstock, down the middle again at four and a quarter and then turn it and cut it at four and a quarter. So now you have your three pieces here that are going to become your flying seagull card. All right. And What? Let me get my baby ruler. I like my baby ruler better. Okay. All right. Put my eyeballs on. Okay. So one of these folds is two inches, and one of these outside folds is two and a quarter inch. So you want the two inch fold 
that's what's going to attach to the back here. So you want the two inch fold. So I have my I have my two two inch folds here and that's going to attach to the back of this piece. Okay, but it doesn't go like this. If it goes like this, then your card won't fold properly. All right. So what you have to do is fold these folds back. Fold your two inch folds back. Okay. And it's this side here that we're going to attach to the card. Okay. And what I'm doing is just sort of measuring where I want it. Um, okay. So I've turned this over. This is going to get attached. So I'm going to put my glue here. This piece is four and a quarter. These two pieces are two. So you're going to have like about an eighth of an inch on either side of this four and a quarter inch piece. And you want the folds to go to the center of the card. Okay, because your wings should come up together and meet. It's four and a quarter. Oh dear. This piece is cut wrong. Hang on, guys. Ooh, it's a good thing I figured that out. One moment, please. My rich razzleberries cut at four by four, and that's not what I need. It needs to be four and a quarter by four and a quarter. So you didn't see me make that cut, because I made it ahead of time. Guess what? I made it wrong. All right. I was wondering why I didn't have a piece. All right, there's my four and a quarter by four and a quarter inch piece. I'm getting ready to attach this. I want my fold to go to the center. So I have folded it back. I've put the glue on this side. And for spacing purposes, this is what I want to see. You're going to have about an eighth of an inch. on either side. I want that to be very, very straight. Okay. See how I've attached that? Now I'm going to do the same thing here. I folded my two inch panel back. I'm going to put the glue on it. Or the adhesive. I want my folds to meet here in the middle. All right, now you have gold wings. You see that? You see that? 
you have gold wings. Now here is the mechanism of your card. So you'll need a piece of designer series paper to cover your panels, okay? And your designer series paper then, this piece needs to be four by four. Oh man, I know what I did. Let's see if I can undo it. Oh, I wonder if I can undo it. I bet I can't. Oh, I know why that piece was four by four now because I wanted to put this piece on instead. <laughs> I wanted to attach it to this one. Well, you know what? I'm going to attach it to that. I'm just going to cover that. I wanted a different color back there so that you could see it better. Oh, you guys. This is why I make mistakes. Okay. This piece is four and a quarter by four and a quarter. I'm just going to cover up this piece of rich razzleberry that I attached. <sighs> How will they know? How will they know? They won't know. And now this piece should be four by four, which it is. And then I cut my designer series paper down to three, seven, five, three, seven, five, three and a quarter by three and a quarter. So I'm just going to put all those together. Uh, we'll just pretend that I attached my wings to the back of that fresh freesia piece instead of the rich razzleberry piece that I just cut. That's why it's smaller. El Dippo here. <sighs> you know, this is why I tell my students in class not to work ahead. Because I've already done all the stupid things and made all the stupid mistakes that you can make. And here I am making all the stupid mistakes live. But you know what? What I tell you last week? Fail only means first attempt at learning. All right. So we have our gold wings back there. And what we want are I'm just folding it all in because this card will fold flat. So you have a mountain fold and then a valley fold and then you have those other two pieces that are flipped backwards and attached to your four by four, four and a quarter by four and a quarter piece. Uh, I didn't tell you what the dimensions are on these. Okay, your designer series paper. You have um, two pieces that are cut at two inches by four inches. And then you have two pieces that are cut at uh, one and three quarter or one and a half by four. Okay. And that's these pieces here. One and a half by four. All right. So now we're going to attach those. In fact, I think Susan's card used this Dainey Delights paper. Um, for a couple of her cards. Uh, she made her card white. I decided I wanted my card to be rich razzleberry because I like this little paper. This I like these little tiny dainty little uh, flowers and they're in rich razzleberry. And I thought, you know what? I like those. So I'm going to do those. So my card will be similar to hers. Only it's done on rich razzleberry instead of white. So two pieces of designer series paper cut at two by four and two pieces of designer series paper cut at one and a half by four because I use a quarter inch cut down on mine. 
all right if you're an eighth of an inch you adjust those measurements however you'd like I don't like eighth inch cuts I like a little bit more border and <clears throat> that's why we're all different everybody can make theirs their way all right so now this is how the card will look when it's in the envelope and this is how the card looks like this so let us decorate this card and put some prettiness on it okay all right so I decided that um, this would make a beautiful beautiful thank you card for somebody you know Hello, Amy. It's nice that you got to catch me. Yay! All right. I'm using the Dainty Delight stamp set. And I've got Rich Razzleberry here. And I can't see what I'm doing because that's white on white. So let me put my border underneath it so that I can see to stamp it. There we go. And we will attach that. And this uh, die cut that I'm using is from the um, Fancy Folds. Something Fancy dies. I'll show them to you here. The Something Fancy dies. You get three little um, dies here that'll cut out the tops of your um, tags and make holes if you want. And then you've got a graduated style here. This is the graduated style I'm using. And then you've got a couple of extras uh, shapes in there. So that is the uh, Something Fancy. And put that over there out of the way. I am going to just stick that in there. And through the magic of television. Hi, Gingy. Good morning. As you can see, I have um, several others that I cut out because I couldn't decide what color. Um, this particular stamp set this Dainty Delights uh, paper has Starry Sky and uh, Crushed Curry so I had um, and I used Rich Razzleberry so I cut out like one of everything and that's okay because I can take those put them over in my envelope over here uh, uh, yes I do remember that Amy <laughs> she says remember when we had to just guess I used to tell people that they had to just see through the middle of their stamps. They had to have magic x-ray eyes. And because I'm going to decorate this with some flowers and a vine from the Dainty Delights. Um, uh, die cuts. I am going to put that flat. In the center there. And... This is the stamp set that I'm using, Dainty Delight, which is available in the mini catalog still. Uh, and the paper was the celebration paper, which unfortunately sold out. So if you didn't get the Dainty Delights stamp or the paper, you're out of luck. But these are the dies that come. These are called, I think they're called the same name because they decided to do that. Dainty Delight dies. There's 16 of them in here. Lots of, and uh, several of them match the stamp set. They'll cut out the stamp set. And then you have several solid ones, which is what I'm going to use. So I'm going to use this vine here. And do I have my, I don't think I have my white glue over here. So, oh, one moment, please. I knew that white blue was calling my name for a reason. Sitting over there, calling my name. Oh, I think I'll take a... 
Thank you, Amy. All right. Now, I did not run this through the machine with adhesive on the back because um, it doesn't need to have adhesive everywhere. So I'm going to decide where I want it. And then I'm going to uh, put some white glue on the back of it. And let me see here. Uh, I didn't want to have to use my fingers, but I guess I'm going to have to use my fingers. I'm going to have to use my fingers. All right, I got to put my eyeballs on. Not that you can see me. All right. And my silicone pad is, of course, on the other table. One moment, please. Oh, golly gee willikers. Wouldn't it be amazing if your demonstrator came to a live prepared? Ha, 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 ha. That would be amazing. Sorry for the sniffing. I'm sorry. I apologize. Ugh. I should have taken a Zyrtec before I came on. All right. Where is my tool? Get that out of the way. All right. So it looks like I need some glue from here to here. Yeah, it sure would be nice if your demonstrator came prepared for a live. Is that what you're saying, Jen? <laughs> uh, come on. Come on, little glue. I think my glue is getting low. Come on. I don't want a big glob of glue. Come on. Sing the Jeopardy song, guys, while I'm trying to get glue on here. You can see there's no glue on here. Come on. Stick that in there. Oh, come on. Don't make me take you apart. This is making me mad. Shoot. This is making me mad. I just want to decorate my card. You, there you go. You crazy piece of machinery here. Oh, I think that was a plug that was in there. Come on. I can't see what I'm doing. Let me put my eyeballs on. Is there something stuck in there? There it comes. Okay, see? That's why you do it over here, because you knew that was going to happen. You knew that when that plug came out, that is exactly what was going to happen. Yep, 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 yep. All right. I, I don't know. Is that out of camera? Is that out of camera, guys? I hope not. Is it out? Can you see it okay? Yeah, I know. All right, that's okay. I can still use all that glue. All right, now I'm going to get a few flowers out here because I want to put a little, a few decorations on there. And some of my flowers and leaves have adhesive on the back and some of them don't. So let me just, that one does. I know these new ones that I cut don't. So just because I want to make it a little cuter, I'm going to use this glue here. And 
and I'm going to stick that. I think I got too much glue on there. I want to get a little bit of that off. I'm going to stick that right there. The pick tool, Amy, is that what you're talking about? This tool here? This is a picker tool. It's got putty on one end, and it's got your poker tool on the other, but if you take it apart, it's got a spatula, and you can put your poker in here. And it also comes with um, an interchangeable ball tip to use for scoring. So this is a picker tool. They're about $10. You need to order one if you don't have one. Can't live without my picker tool. Okay. I'm going to put an extra leaf there, coming down into there. And I know that I have a center here. On the backs of these, I ran these through with adhesive. So all I have to do is use my picker tool because I have no fingernails. And put the center in that flower. And then I want to use these flowers. So I'm just going to go over here to this glue. And I'm going to pick up a little bit of this glue that we have laying here. I'm going to use it to just add some Starry Night Blue. And I have some buds here. So I'm going to just pull off the adhesive I'm just going to place a few buds on here. I think I'm going to put a little blue down there too. Let's put a little blue down there. You're on it, Mom. That was quick. Okay. All right. Now let's put a few little more buds on there. I'm telling you, I could not do this. I wish I had a program that would read these messages out loud, then I could listen to you guys talk to me while I'm doing this instead of having to look up and see what you're saying. All right, I'm going to put a couple more flowers on here. I think I'll put one more of these flowers and then we'll see what jewels I should put on it because you know I can't just leave it naked. You know I'm going to have to, like, put some jewels. I think I need this flower up here. All right. I don't want to overwhelm it. I don't want to overwhelm it. But I do think I'm going to put a flower... over here. And I think I will, I think this is an upside down cone flower. That's what I'm calling it. Put a little leaf with it. And we will put a bud head on it and call it a day. Oh, my fingers are getting... Let me get my washcloth here. My fingers are getting gluey. That's the only bad thing about working with white glue is you get your fingers get all gluey. 
All right. And now, see, Amy, you use your putty head and you can pick your flowers up and put them all back in there. I think those are all trash. All right. <laughs> I tried to put those in the trash and the static electricity just had them flying back at me. <clears throat> all right. <sighs> I know I have gemstones. <clears throat> and um, guess what else I'm going to get? Can anybody guess what I'm going to get right this minute? From the other side of the world? Guess, 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 guess. <gasps> No guesses? Oh, this? This is a Tombow, uh, close, Amy, glitter pin, Wink Estella. Um, this is a Tombow adhesive, mono adhesive. We used to sell these, Stampin' Up! used to sell these. They changed over uh, to a different machine now. I just don't have it at this table. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. Of course, I have to go get some Winkostella, guys. Winkostella, which is like glitter, so you know what? I'm going to put some wink here on these flowers because, because I can, can, can. You know, we love to have some Wink Estella. You have to have a little bit of glitz and glamour. And then I've just got some, whoops, iridescent rhinestones here. And I'm going to put a couple of those on there. I think I'll put one right smack dab in the middle of that. A little one. I'll put a little one down there. Well, I'll put a medium one over here just because I can. And I will stop. I will not go overboard. I will stop. And I'll put that together later. So this is, oh, oh no. Okay. Note to self, this Bottom leaf is going to have to be clipped off if this is going to stand up. So, when you put that on there, just be aware of that. Was there glitter in that pen? Yes, there was. This is a Winka Stella pen, and it's full of uh, iridescent glitter. It's hard to tell. Let me put it up here to the thing. I've got glitter here, here, and I glittered the flowers. I don't know if you can tell or not when you look at them, because it's hard to show on camera the glitter. But there is glitter on there. It's not as fabulous as our Dazzling Diamonds, which I still have some of, but it's close. It's close. Can you see it? Yeah, you can see it glittering just a little bit, I think. So... This is the card. This is the finished card, and it would close up. You close it up like this to get it into the envelope. To get it in the envelope. And then if you wanted to write, you know, a personal message, you could always put a piece of white uh, cardstock in here which down the road, you know, I probably will. And um, because I have, let me clean this off. You know, I can't, I can't, I just can't deal with, thanks mom. Um, I can't deal with a naked envelope. So I have to put, you know, a few little flowers on there. Can't have a naked envelope. No way, Jose. 
It is against my religion. So, so, that's my drinking word, so, y'all drink. Have a drink of your favorite refresher. You know mine's Diet Coke, which I have over here, off camera. All right. Now, because I'm dying to use this paper and I'm dying to use this color combo, I'm going to make another one. Maybe if I can get that closed up. Um, but anyway, so this is almost ready. I would have to put a note in it and sign it, sign the back of it, sign the back of it. But there you go. Ta-da! Fits right into the envelope. So for now, let's put this over at the side. And I'm going to whip out another one of these real quick. I am just dying to use this color combo. I want to use this paper. And I'm not using... I used this paper, which is the Fancy Flora. This is the Fancy Flora. We made an impossible card out of this the other day, uh, which I think I'll do next week, because that takes a little bit of work. Um, the impossible card, it's a lot of technical cutting and stuff. So I've got this already pre-scored, pre-cut. So let's whip it together without doing it wrong this time. Just getting my folds happening in there. And I'm pretty sure that's my two-incher. Yep, that's my two-inch fold. That's what I want. Got to have the two-inch fold for the back. You want your two-and-a-quarter fold out on each end. And that is my two-incher. Okay, and remember we we fold those two inch ones back, okay, and that's where we're going to put the adhesive. Whoops, I always want to put that on wrong, that's my problem. I always want to put that on wrong. The paper goes on this way. So normally, if you're putting stuff together, you know you put that on top. You got to put this together backwards. This is the back, and your folds, your two-inch folds, are going to butt up to the back of that four-and-a-quarter by four-and-a-quarter piece. Okay, you see what I did there? I folded them both back. Okay. And just because Amy asked, I'm going to show her. This is the stamp and seal that we sell now, as opposed to the mono adhesive by Tombow. When this first came out, it was hard to use. Um, it was temperamental, and sometimes it still is. Uh, but any time that it wants to get temperamental and not want to run, you just run it over the back of your hand. Okay. So remember, I want the fold to the middle of my four and a quarter piece. And I want it really, really close to the edge. Okay, remember I gotta have my goal wings. Here's my fold. So I'm gonna put my, my glue on it. My adhesive. My stamp and seal. Okay, so see now I've got it attached to that piece. 
and I got my wings. If you don't have your wings, you've got it together wrong, okay? So now we flip it over, <clears throat> and we've got our four and a quarter by four and a quarter, and this should be a cut down to four by four, which it is. I'm not going to make this one in two tones. I'm just dying. This color combo is just, ugh. I was just, I'm just dying. I keep seeing cards made with this soft suede and this paper, and I'm just like dying to use it. So guess what? I am, this is the card that I cut like two minutes before I went on air. So I am making this card. All right, so this is my two and a quarter inch fold. You always want your two and a quarter inch folds out on the end. That's folded the wrong way, so I gotta get my folds. Gotta get my folds all in there. And all right, that's one and a half. So, okay, I got my soft suede here. I just need, you know, what I need. Nope. See, did you just see me run that on my hand? Anytime that it wants to be temperamental. You just run it on your hand or you run it on your silicone pad. It just needs that friction to get going again. So, that was the problem with this, but this is super duper sticky. Okay, so we have that at the bottom. I'm going to switch them. I'm going to switch these. I'm going to put that at the top. On this one just because I can now okay guys this I can either put this on there up here or I can stamp directly on there kind of think I like it like that though and and you know what else I've got this gorgeous evening evergreen ribbon. I'm designing this card. I'm designing this card right in front of y'all. You know what? I think I'm going to do that. To use a sponge around. I didn't use a sponge around anything. Y'all, if you could see how I'm holding my mouth. You know how you have to hold your mouth to get things straight? <laughs> oh, my gosh. Okay. I'll finish this card, and then we will be done. I was hoping that my paper pumpkin would come today, but no such luck. I noticed that the people are starting to put their paper pumpkins on Demonstrator Planning Place. So I'm like, oh. So I ran to the mailbox before I came online today. And guess what? No luck. No luck. No paper pumpkin. Anybody else get their paper pumpkins? Anybody? Let's see anybody okay 
I am doing a Fobo. We're going to do a faux bow on here. You know what that means? That means a fake bow. That's what we're going to do. I don't know what I should make this. Should I make it a birthday card? Should I make another thank you card? Or a sympathy card? I don't know. I made a sympathy card last week when I made. All right. I'm going to put this on here. Straight. And you know what? Since I'm not putting any other decoration on here. <sighs> All right, this is my faux bow. I'm not even going to tie a bow. I'm just going to see if I can pull that through there. Oh, pulled too tight. Uh oh. Got to loosen it up. Move it over. You know what? Maybe not. I think we will go without it. Just put that on there. And I think I'm going to pop that off. But first... Is that flat? Yes, it is flat. And where's my soft suede? It's right in front of my face. Yes, it is. Right in front of my face. I cut that ribbon and I've got that ribbon dust all over there. You guys. Oh, <laughs> I forgot I glued it together. I'm like, where's my white piece? Oh my gosh, where's my white piece? <clears throat> This is the Something Fancy stamp set that matches this. That matches this set. And so, you know what? I don't think that's going to fit. A hard time deciding what to do. Oops, that's the wrong one. Deciding what one to do. I need a block. I need a block. I need a block. Okay. Amy, I will be happy to take your order, honey. You better look through the catalog because the new catalog's coming out in May. So the mini catalog is expiring at the end of April. So the little purple catalog is expiring and we've got card we've got stuff that is retiring colors. The end colors are retiring, y'all. Tell your customers you people who are on here that are demonstrators, remind your customers the end colors are retiring at the end of this month. The um Ones that were 2021, 2023, which is your pale papaya, fresh freesia, evening evergreen, which is this ribbon. Um, polished pink. There's one other color. Pale papaya, fresh freesia, evening evergreen, polished pink. Come on, soft succulent. That's this light color in here, soft succulent. All right, 
put this as a birthday card and I got to jump my ribbon so I'm going to put some little at the top the very top and I'll put some at the bottom those are the five colors that are retiring on March 29th, Stampin' Up! is going to announce a color refresh. So there's going to be other colors that are retiring, but I just placed my order a couple of days ago because I did not have the Evening Evergreen refill. And I went online today, and I can tell you that Pale Papaya and Fresh Freesia are low inventory. And once they're gone, they're gone. So if you need those two refills, you better get it quick. But I have the refills for all the other ones. And if you are just in love with the paper, okay, let's see here. If you're in love with any of those papers, you want to make sure you get them too. I don't want that up too high. I want it to show right there. Happy birthday. All right. So here is my... Here is my card. So this is my finished card. Okay, let's get all this stuff out of the way for y'all. Okay, so this is the finished card. What do you think? What do you think? There's one. And there's one. And here's one. And like I said, so there are your three flying seagull cards. And trust me, you put these together with white glue, you're going to you're going to regret it if you have to take them apart. <laughs> this was the one on our play date that we had to tear apart. Oh, we ruined it cuz we put it together wrong. Oh, so be careful, be careful, but there you go. So that is today's live flying seagull card. Like I said, I will have the tutorials for you um, uh, on, on my uh, Stampin' with the Queen page. I just need to check the mechanisms, make sure I put it together right so that you can make them. And, um, all, like I said, the tutorials are $3, uh, unless you come to my classes, and then, guess what? Your, my classes, they get them free. Anyway, um, I have classes on Tuesdays at 6 p.m. and at 2 p.m., but my 6 p.m. is full, so it would be the 2 p.m. I still have openings for, and this Tuesday we are making, what are we making? We are making a shadow box card. We are making a shadow box card and you'll get a tutorial with that. And I may demonstrate that next time uh, along with the uh, impossible fold card. And that's what we're doing on Tuesday. We're using essential blooms or irresistible blooms, which is the stamp set here, the stamp set. So I hope to see you tomorrow night, some of you at class, and uh, I hope to see you uh, next month. I hope you try to make a flying seagull card, and if you do, um, please post it on my Stampin' with the Queen page so I can, oh, excuse me, can see your beautiful handiwork. And happy spring, you all. Hope you enjoyed today. Go stamp something. Bye.